Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. Thursday, and all today's guests, including Farhan, standing by, are brought to you by the Vancouver Giants. Giants return to the LEC on Sunday when they take on Wenatchee. Puck drop is 4 p.m. Grab a 6 or 12 game flex pack starting as low as $129. Oh. Good deal. Get all the details at VancouverGiants.com slash tickets as we bring in, as we do every Thursday, from TSN, Farhan Walsh. Farhan, thanks for doing this, sir. How are you? I'm good, my friend. Happy belated birthday. I heard you turned 35 the other day. Darn right. I, I thought it was 34, but I checked my birth certificate. It is indeed uh, 35. I wish. Hey, uh, we, f- <laughs> we found out yesterday the date that Roberto Luongo is going into the uh, Canucks Ring of Honor. It's d- December 14th. Farhan, I don't think there's any doubt that he belongs there, but some people say he should have his number retired. What do you say? Uh, well, I'm, I'm of two minds, right? I think if you're going to retire a goaltender, he is clearly the best goaltender that has ever played for this franchise. And, you know, I know there's that debate, and should they or shouldn't they, because Kirk McLean also wore number one. But when you look at the body of work, Longo is a Hall of Fame goaltender. Um, you know, Kirk McLean was a solid NHL goaltender, and so I don't think that should be the reason if they're not retiring it. But bigger picture, in my opinion, for an organization that has won so little at the highest level, they don't need more jerseys retired. You know, like they probably have too many anyway, considering the fact that this has just been a middling organization for the better part of it, its existence. Well said. Well said. Very nice. Um, Corey Schneider, meanwhile, we're really focusing on Canuck goaltenders around the 2011 era here. Uh, far end. He retires. Uh, seems like the nicest guy in the world. You were in the dressing room back then. You still are. What was he like uh, to deal with? Just awesome, like so awesome to deal with. And I mean, generally the players back then were of a of a different ilk and mindset and were, by and large, the majority of them were great to deal with compared to what we deal with now. But Corey Schneider was certainly at the top of the list. And, you know, not, not just how, you know, media friendly he may have been, but just he was put in a pretty challenging situation, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you know, with Roberto and just the spotlight and the goalie controversy. And I think both men handled it exceptionally well, but Schneider especially, right? Because, um, you know, he had multiple roles in all of that. And sometimes there's no win for you, right? People always say the backup job is the easiest in sport, but when you have to replace a guy that was as talented and popular as Luongo, um, that's not always easy. And and I think just the way he handled all of the scrutiny around that situation, all of the attention, and diffused any potential controversy, even when he was the guy that took the job at, at various points, uh, I think it was remarkable. And it's unfortunate that the career went the way it did for him in New Jersey because I think he had the ability or the potential to be an elite, elite, you know, all-time goaltender. But instead he goes there plays in front of horrible teams and then gets the concussion and other injury issues. It was unfortunate the way his career wound up ending because it looked so promising in Vancouver. Uh, Farhan, Lions, Riders, Friday night should be a decent crowd for sure. The Lions are the hottest team in the West. They've won three straight. Uh, But is this a game? Last time the Riders were here, they gave them uh, uh, I actually, I, I no, they didn't win, but they gave him a hell of a game. Uh, Donnie, you and I were at that game. Remember that game? They gave him a test. They gave him yeah. a test. Uh, is I don't this, think uh, you were paying attention. <laughs> is this a game where you could catch them off guard? I, I don't know about off guard, but like people view it as a trap game, not because it's the Riders, but because Winnipeg is next week. Yeah. And that's where everyone's yeah. focus is, right? So, you know, you, you want to make sure they're not thinking that. I was at practice yesterday. I don't get that sense from the team. You know, I think there's other things around this team that they believe they need to improve on, right? I mean, if you're Vernon Adams, you want to start cutting down on interceptions. If you're uh, the defense, you know, the, the six games between the two Edmonton games, they played relatively poorly and they took a step forward against Edmonton but that's a real specific type of game plan because of what Trey Ford is as a quarterback they need to be a little bit different in this game and they lost the last time they played this team right so I think that there's a lot of motivation and a lot of reason to be focused so I don't know that they're going to necessarily look ahead or, or fall victim to a to a trap right uh, they've just they've just got to play better and peak at the right time because this team, the first seven, eight games of the season, was better than what we're seeing now, and I think they realize that. 
So we got the Argos in Winnipeg, and, and, you know, this should be the game of the year in the CFL. And the Argos, because they're so far out in front of everybody in the East, they can have the luxury of resting uh, players. They're not going to start their quarterback, Chad Kelly. That's not good for you guys at TSN. I, I think Winnipeg has sold the game out. The BC Lions can't be happy because they're chasing Win. I mean, what are your thoughts on them not starting uh, Kelly uh, for him? Yeah, like, look, it's hard to blame them because, you know, they know what their bigger picture goals are, and they don't, they, they're going to feel as an organization that they don't owe anybody anything. But certainly from a league perspective, it's a negative, and Toronto does have an opportunity to rest him at other times, right? They don't have to rest him here because along with what's happening for the rest of the regular season, they're going to have a buy that first playoff game as well, right? So, um, you know, you could certainly make the case that they should let him play in this game because he hasn't been overly tested all season. And, you know, they could get him into that great cup type of environment in front of a sold-out crowd at IG Field in Winnipeg, and it would be a you know great thing for the league but a good test for him. But I think there's also a feeling that, look, if we go in and play even with our full roster, we're less – motivated than Winnipeg is. There's no way around that. On top of that, because there's less at stake for us, we're not going to show them a lot, which puts Chad Kelly and our offense not in the best position to be successful, right? So, you know, I'm sure they're thinking of all of those things. You know, Winnipeg's defense is so good, you're probably at greater risk of injury against them than you might be from some others. So, you know, I, I get it. I don't like it. You know, I, I'll tell you this, from a TSN perspective, we have been talking about this game for the better part of the last yeah, month. Yeah, exactly. I've been trying to create, we've been trying to create storylines and content to drive this game, and all of a sudden, all of that, you put the brakes on on Monday, right? So, so that's tough for sure, but, you know, I, I get it, but I wish they weren't doing it nonetheless. Uh, down south, uh, Miami at Buffalo in, in week four. Dolphins throttling oh. Denver 70-20. to 20. Uh, everybody seems to be impressed by Miami, and especially their speed. What about you, Farhan? Yeah, me too. You know, and at the start of the year, you know, I, I still thought Buffalo was going to win that division, but I also felt Buffalo was going to take a slight step back from where they were last year. Uh, but the Dolphins, my goodness, and I've always, always been a big believer in Tua, right? But the rest of that roster and the way it's constructed and the speed that they possess and some interesting comments from both Troy Aikman and Aaron Rodgers yes, comparing yeah. it to a CFL offense where they use motion not just to get leverage and matchup um, uh, advantages, they're using it to let their guys build speed before they hit the line of scrimmage and take off, and that it, it looks like a CFL offense from that perspective. So, you know, it, it's an interesting point, and, and good on them for recognizing it. But boy, is that team outstanding right now in every phase. Like, and you know, Javon Holland, the way he's playing right now, mm -hmm. I think one of the publications have him rated as the the number one ranked safety in the league through four weeks. Like, it is. That is a complete, complete football team, and they're as good as any in the league right now. I think they're going to win that game. How far can they, with Kansas City in the same conference and Buffalo and other teams, uh, Cincinnati off to a slow start, but far, how far can they go in that conference? They can win it. They absolutely can because Tua is playing at an MVP level. They've got more speed than anybody. I mean, you look at some of the problems Kansas City has in their receiving core, and I don't believe their defense is as good as Miami's, right? They're, Miami's just not used to being this guy, right? They're not used yeah. to being this team. So, yeah. you know, we'll see what happens in these biggest games like Buffalo. But, you know, from a talent perspective, they're as good as anybody. And coming into the year, we talked about the big three in the AFC. Well, there's clearly a big four. And from Tua's perspective, he's entering into that conversation. You know, when you look at the top five quarterbacks in the league, right, and you think of those three playing for the big three, plus Herbert and Hurts, two is entering that conversation yeah. now the way he's playing. And he was like that the first month of last season before injuries kicked in. If this kid can stay healthy, he'll be in the MVP conversation in Week 17. CFL, NFL, NHL, he covers it all. It's oh, Farhan Lalji. It. Thanks so much, Farhan. Appreciate it. Hey, buddy, listen, look at my segment on Michael Penix Jr. because college football is right there, too. Hey, Washington's yeah. quarterback is in the Heisman discussion. I, we cover that as well, my friend. Hey. Well, no, I, 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 I think last week I said I wanted to talk to you about Michael Penix. I didn't. Remind me. We'll do that next week. Hey, he's also agent for Vernon Adams because, uh, uh, you know, he's leading <laughs> the CFL in interceptions with 16, but it's okay, right, Farhan? Hey, listen, uh, there's three quarterbacks in this league that have had over 3,400 yards and 20 touchdowns. All of them have at least 11 interceptions. The gunslingers sling it, 
and they'll keep slinging it despite mistakes. I'm not telling you interceptions are easy or okay, but the top quarterbacks in the league are living that life. Fran, thanks for this. Appreciate it. Put Dolly Wall in his place. I like it. No, you didn't put me in his place. The guy's leading the league in interceptions, Don. Thanks, Fran.